Welcome. You're listening to Making Relationships Work. We're a company focused on women and their marriage. We lead and teach women just like you how to grow into and access whenever you need to your wise woman self, the part of you who is deeply connected to your purpose, your innate wisdom and your husband and family. We teach women in marriages how to rebuild trust and connection, to work through conflicts, no matter how deep, no matter how painful, and to lead your marriage to a place where the two of you experience marriage mastery. This podcast is about learning the systems and techniques that truly work to reconnect you back into your marriage so that you can experience the freedom that comes with a masterful marriage. Since this podcast is totally free, if you're getting tons of value and you want to support us and make sure that you get more of this good stuff, subscribe below and rate and review our podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hello. Hello, women making marriages work. Hello, making relationships work. Hello, beautiful wise women out there. It's me. It's Meg. Coming to you live, we are going to be talking today about something really, really important and I'm really excited about it. So what we're doing, we're just waiting a couple of minutes to make sure everyone comes online and that people can hear me. (laughs) And then we're going to be myth busting, which is one of my most favorite things to do. And the myth we're going to bust today is that you can't change him. Now it's really important that we explain and extrapolate what this means and it's really important that we get this definition of what I'm talking about locked in because what needs to be remembered always is that you literally can't make someone else do something that you want them to do. No one is saying that. However, you can create an environment of influence where you give and receive influence from each other. And most of the time people use the, oh, well, you can't change him or, oh, well, you can't change them as a way of avoiding responsibility and as a way of avoiding the opportunity for their own growth and leadership in that moment. And that is the myth we are busting today. We're going to bust that right open. Okay. So this is going to be a really interesting uh, experience for us as we talk this through, mainly because what's most important to me is that you understand your own power and that you don't give away that power by saying, well, I can't make him change because that's true, but not true. And we're going to focus on the way that that's not true so that you can access and understand the power that you have each and every day in each and every way. Because when you know that, that my friend is when everything opens up for you and you can create and claim the life that you've been wanting to have. Okay. So let's start now unpacking what this is. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe how many women beautiful women call me each day and tell me, well, I can't change him. So I can't change our situation. He won't go to couples counseling. He won't change the way he interacts with me. He doesn't notice or appreciate me. And I try and then I get a bit tired and then I give up, but then I try again. And this cycle, this circle is really why they're calling me. So I love these types of calls because what I get to do is to connect women to their power. (laughs) And so we're going to do this here today so that all of you understand just how incredibly important you are. Okay. So if you are in a marriage that is hurting you, that is um, not showing up or not, hasn't got a culture that you really think is uplifting and connecting and kind of wonderful, If you're not living that kind of life and you want to be, chances are that's why you're here. What most women don't realize is their power of influence. And this is what we're talking about today. So when I talk to you about how you can't change him, we are going to really bust that open. So I want you to think about yourself as a wise woman in a strong identity. And I want you to think about when you're in that power that lives in you, all of us have this part of us, 
that resides in us. This part of us is strong, it's capable, it's certain. It isn't a dictatorship, it's a leadership. And it's a leadership with the attunement to others. It's where you can connect into yourself and then you can lead from there so that people feel like they belong, that they're a part of the community, but you kind of got this. That's what a wise woman is and every one of you has that in her. The question for you is how often is she at the table? How often is she leading? How many hours in a day do you see her? And it's the most authentic part of yourself. It's the part of you when you are just who you are. It's uh, not putting on a performance. It's not moving into the victim space. It's not moving into the hyper power space. It's kind of this beautiful, neutral, strong version. And this is a really important definition because when you're in this space and you have found something in your life that's not working for you, it might be the culture of your marriage. And you're in your wise woman space and you're not so comfortable with, hello, Jesse, hi, Leilani, hi, Lisa. And you're not comfortable with your connection with your husband. It's not low. It's too low, I mean, or it's not in a space which is fluid and free where you're tripping up on past hurts and resentments and defensiveness and anger circuiting, yeah? When you're stuck in that space, you're not in your wise woman. You're not in your place of power. And so most of the women that I talk to are not in their wise woman space. We are literally teaching them what that is, how to find it, how to stay in it, how to lead from there, yeah? So that's what we, it's a very big part of what I teach. But if you are in your wise woman space and you notice that your culture of your marriage isn't where you want it to be, if you notice that it's out of alignment with your dreams and your values and your expectations of what is okay and the kind of life that you want, when you're in your wise woman, you have a conversation with your husband that goes like this, my love, what's going on? Why are we so far apart, do you think? What do you think's going on here? And that is a very different conversation than somebody who isn't in her wise woman, who notices her marriage is not where she wants it to be. And she will say something like, why don't you notice me? You don't like me anymore. I do all of this around the house with the kids, with the life that we have. And I feel so unappreciated. I feel so undervalued. Why can you not see me? And then they go from that space into, I can't influence him. Do you see why that's got to be a myth that just gets blown right up? Does that now make sense? Because a wise woman who says, my love, what's going on for us? Where are we? And can hold that level of certainty and power, her experience of her marriage and the expectation she has of how we show up sets the bar and the precedence high. And her husband says, you've changed the rules on me about how we interact. What am I going to do here? How am I going to show up differently? And that is true for marriage, but my loves, that is true for life. That is true for parenting, for your work, for the roles that you have in your community, the roles that you have with your friends. When you change the way that you show up, the other person makes a choice in how they respond. So I don't want you to ever let yourself get away with the idea that you cannot influence because you know what? It's wrong. It's bullshit. It is an excuse of yours to stay weak or to stay in a hyper strength, which isn't authentic with yourself. It is not you and your wise woman. Does that make sense? So this is so important because when you know this, and you're approaching a relationship and you're showing up in that wise, connected, warm, loving space, but you're still holding the bar and the standard of what's okay and how to treat you, the other person makes a choice and they opt in and the culture starts to change or they opt out 
And then you're left with the next part, which is they're not choosing to come in. Do I have more work to do? What kind of things can I do in this moment? Where is my friend? When your friend is your husband in this instance, where is my friend? I wonder what's going on that he wouldn't choose to have this wonderful marriage. What do we need to do next? That is what a resourceful, committed, decisive wise woman does. That is how she shows up. She doesn't show up and try for a little while and then give up and go away. She takes responsibility for herself, for the way that she interacts with the world, for the, what, for the way she allows the world to treat her. And when she knows what her standards are, she holds them gently, kindly, calmly, connectedly, but she holds them. And so it is absolutely a myth that you cannot influence others. You set the tone, you teach people how to treat you, you are the one who says, that's okay. So let me give you an example. In my Facebook group, Women Making Marriages Work, I have set some rules about how we engage here. And any new person that comes in, and you're all welcome if you're not on this channel, come across and join us. But anyone that comes in sees what the rules are. And I hold people to this because this is like an extension of a room of my house. Or perhaps you might think about it as some of my offices. And you beautiful women come in and share stories and ask for help and uplift others. And when you're operating within those boundaries, I celebrate you. But I tell you what, if someone comes in and does not fit the standard of how we treat each other in this community, they're gone. I can't let anyone else have that power over this group, this culture, this dynamic. And so if you're thinking, how do you lead and how do you set the tone? The first thing is clarity. Be really clear on what you want. Because when you're really clear on what you want, you're certainly able to influence it. Yeah? But you've got to find your wise woman. Now let's talk about when you can't find your wise woman or you activate her and then she disappears. That just means we've got to strengthen you. And so if you're really serious about wanting to claim your own wise woman as your own identity, the first thing is to make a decision. I'd encourage you to watch my masterclass. When you complete those five steps from your wise woman self, you will not believe the impact it has on your life and on your marriage. I'd also encourage you to book a call with us and that way we can get you really clear on what's going on. So I am always happy to meet you on those calls and we will let you know what we're noticing about where you are, where your clarity needs to be sharpened and brought into focus. That's what those calls do. And then from there, you get to make a decision about exactly what the right next thing for you is. And we will help you get really clear on that so you know what you're doing. And when you've got that clarity, my loves, when you've got that clarity, you've got everything. When you've got your wise woman, there is nothing that's going to stand in your way. You're not going to feel like a victim again. You're not going to feel powerless. You're not going to need to even feel resentful. Do you know why? Because you can check in and use your wise woman self to sift through what's really going on here and then choose a response that serves you best. And when you have that, my loves, the whole world opens up. All of a sudden, you're not cowering or you're not frightened or you're not making yourself small or not trying to take up too much room or be too loud. You just get to exist as the most beautiful version of yourself. And I ask of you, what more could you want? Especially when you get to lead it into your marriage. And oh my gosh, don't even get me started about what this kind of leadership does for your beautiful children who get to experience that feminine energy that is leading and courageously walking through the work that's got to be done because every life has work that has to be done and you're doing it and you're leading it and you and your husband are connected. Oh, you all know what that alarm means. It's nearly time for me to go. And so I want you to claim this identity. I want you to choose this identity because when you live here, you have everything and never again will you have to be upended by the thought, the myth, which is a thought, yeah, that you can't influence him because you'll know 
that's not true. And you'll know that you're not in your wise woman state. And so you'll know that you have choices and you'll know where to go to get help. We've spelled it all out. Mastermind, oh, mastermind. That's my 12 month program. Not mastermind, masterclass and a call if you want to. No pressure, no rush. You don't have to do that. Watch the masterclass though. Watch the masterclass and commit to this identity that does not take away your own power. Because as soon as you say, I can't influence that, you're saying, I'm no good. I can't lead. I'm not courageous. And that, my darlings, that, my darlings, is just not true. So I want you to recognize your power. I want you to claim it. And I want you to show up in a calm, kind and connected way, which is you enforcing, actually, before we enforce, being really clear on what your standards are. And then saying, well, this is it. This is how we're going to do it. And I love you. And let's talk about this and let's figure it out using all the language we already talked about. I want you to have this life. I want to help you have this life. You can have this life. It's right here ready for the taking. All that's stopping you is the decision to claim your power. And that, my darlings, is everything. All right. Now, a couple of housekeeping things. The first one is we've gone live on YouTube and Apple and Google Play and there's one more podcast channel that we're on I'll think of it in a minute and all the details that you need are in the um, JPEG the picture that Leilani has posted in our Women Making Marriages Facebook group so if you want to find any of them you totally can and if you want to find this Women Making Marriages work in Facebook you can Google us or click on the link below so that's the first thing. The second thing is we have a list of topics that you have asked me to talk about and we'll be starting those topics from this Thursday night's call. And so if you want me to talk about anything else, I want you to add it to that list and Leilani will keep track of it and she'll keep me honest and make sure we get to all of them. So two a week for then <laughs> indefinitely. So let's do that. Okay, now Leilani is going to put the link to the masterclass, which she's already done, but also the booking a call link will go in there as well. And if you have any questions about this, I want you to go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll find them and come back to you. All right, my darlings, time for me to go. Have a wonderful week. Let's enjoy these last bits of summer. I, of course, am not in summer. I'm in winter down here in the Southern Hemisphere, but you are in summer. So enjoy that. Enjoy. It's a wonderful time of year to feel connected to the outside world go outside and go for a swim, go for a walk, thoroughly enjoy yourself. All right, I'll see you later, darlings. See you next time. <laughs>